Hey everyone, this is David Pike, the Motor City Mechanic, and I'm back with another video. Now today we're going to go over step by step what you need to do when it's time to replace the alternator in this Jeep Wrangler with a 3.6 liter Pentastar engine. Check it out. One thing about a Jeep Wrangler is you can tilt the hood all the way back to where it touches the windshield. Now, being that it's a painted surface on both ends, I'm going to put something soft in between so I don't have to worry about anything scratching. I just find the center part of the windshield up here, take the hood prop off, and gently lay it back till it makes contact. Now we've got a lot more room to work up under the hood. Now, being that we're going to be working on the alternator on this Jeep Wrangler, We've also got a positive cable going to it. That positive cable has voltage coming directly from the battery and it's got 12 volts all the time. So that way we don't damage anything electrical. What we're gonna do is go ahead and disconnect the negative battery terminal. All it takes is a 10 millimeter wrench. Make sure you put it up out of the way. That way it doesn't make contact with the post at any time while you're working on it. So we can get a little more access to everything, we're going to be removing this upper plastic closeout panel. It's a matter of just lifting straight up on the front and pulling it forward to clear the fingers that are on the back corners. So a little thing to keep in mind when you're going back with that plastic cover we just took off. you got two rubber bushings here. It helps if you put a little bit of grease on there so they slide down on their alignment pegs a little bit better. Also in the back corner, you've got these two plastic guides. They need to line up with the two plastic fingers that stick up back here at the top of the intake. Line it up. And all you're going to do is give it a couple of gentle taps. And now that plastic cover is reinstalled. So just keep that in mind when you're going back with it. So that I can get more access to the front of the engine to get to the alternator and the serpentine belt, I'm going to be removing the air inlet system. The air filter housing is going to come up as one piece. It just lifts straight up. We've got the plastic connecting tube that has two 10 millimeter bolts that go into the upper radiator support. There's also the coolant overflow hose that has to be removed and also the clamp going onto the throttle body. That's an eight millimeter or a flat tip screwdriver. So take the two 10 millimeters off. And then you can go ahead and pull the coolant overflow hose from that plastic connecting tube. Now for that band clamp. Now we can work the boot off of the intake. Now pull the hose off. Once you get the hose loose, we got one electrical connector we gotta disconnect and it's the air intake temp sensor that's on the bottom of that rubber boot. So just reach up underneath, grab a hold of the lock, release it, and now we're just going to lift straight up on the air filter housing assembly. Now it may be a little difficult depending on how long it's been on there. It's a matter of wiggle in it. Now you don't want to go too drastic because if you do, you could break off the plastic fingers that it keeps everything aligned with. Now we can grab the whole assembly and remove it from the vehicle. Now with the air inlet assembly removed, we actually got more access to that alternator now. You can see it's directly on the front of the engine, and the odd thing about this is it's turned around backwards. The belt pulley is on the engine side, not the radiator side. We've got an electrical connector for both the positive cable from the battery, as well as for the generator field circuit coming from the PCM. We've got multiple bolts along the bottom edge. The next step is going to be removing some of these connectors and also taking the serpentine belt loose. That way we can actually work on getting the bolts off and remove the alternator. Now the positive cable is attached to the alternator using a 13 millimeter nut. Use a 13 millimeter socket, cord the send pack, and take the cable loose. And being that we disconnected the negative cable earlier, we don't have to worry about voltage being on here so it doesn't short out on anything if it comes in contact. Now we move over to that two-stage lock for that generator field circuit. Now the connector for the field circuit has two locks on it. You've got the primary lock, which is the red colored lock, and then you've got another portion you're supposed to squeeze in to release it. Now on that red portion, we need to pull that lock towards the wiring. 
Once that's released, we can now squeeze in on the connector and actually pull it loose from the alternator. Now the tensioner on the front of this 3.6 liter is a different design than what we're used to. It doesn't use a spring to apply constant tension on the serpentine belt. Instead, there's a hydraulic shock at the bottom. So what we've got to do is we've actually got to squeeze in on that shock. And the way we do that is, the center of the tensioner has a square half inch cut into it. What we're going to do is we're going to insert a half inch breaker bar. And then we're going to apply clockwise force. You don't have to keep applying a lot of force. Once you get to a certain point, that shock will slowly start squeezing inward. All you got to do is keep maintaining the pressure till it finally stops. Then you can grab the belt and pull it off of one of the pulleys. So go ahead and insert your breaker bar and apply some downward force. And you'll feel that as you keep applying it, it will slowly start squeezing in. And then that gives you enough slack to actually pull the belt off of one of the pulleys. Now when you go to release it, do it gradually. Don't just let it slam back. Now we can work on getting to the bolts on the front of the alternator. Now the alternator has a bracket up under it. It's got a total of three 13 millimeter bolts as well as a 15 right here. We need to take this bracket off because it actually hides some of the serpentine belt we need to get to. Once I have it off in the alternator, I'll show you a little bit better view of this bracket and how it attaches to the alternator. There you have it. Now the alternator is held in place with two more bolts. We got a 15 millimeter here and a 15 millimeter there. Once we take those loose, we need to make sure we support the alternator. If not, it's just gonna fall. And just pick up, slide it off. So now you got a better view of how the alternator actually mounts. You've got an idler pulley on the left, idler pulley on the right, and then you got the loop of belt right here that the alternator is going to sit through. You got those two long 15 millimeters that went through here and here. Now the bracket tree that goes on the front, there's only two bolts that go through, and that's that 16 that went through there and the 13 down there. So when we go back with it, we need to make sure that the belt's routed properly, get the pulley up under here. I went ahead and installed that lower bracket to the alternator. That way you can see what it looks like while it's on the engine. We've got our two shorter 13s here and here. We've got that longer 16 here, longer 13 there, and of course our two longer 15s that attach the alternator to the engine. And that bracket is mounted just behind this mounting ear on the alternator. So when you go back with it, make sure you go behind it, put your short 13s in the rest of the bolts as well. Of course, that's after the alternator and the belts back on. So what I'm going to do next, I'm going to get my replacement alternator and make sure I've got the bolts through. And I'm going to wrap the belt around the top of the pulley. Just kind of guide it through there. And make sure it's positioned properly. Line up my 15 millimeter bolts. And then run them down. So at this point, the rest of the steps for installing the alternator are just the opposite of removal. We've got our electrical connectors for the generator field circuit, battery cable. We've got that bracket that goes up under with the 13 millimeter and 16 millimeter bolts. Also, we've got the serpentine belt we've got to reinstall. And all we've got to do is do a little bit of a clockwise rotation, gentle rotation to squeeze in on that shock, get the belt on and gently release, and then the air inlet assembly. Otherwise, the steps are installation or the opposite of removal. So as you saw, the procedure is pretty cut and dry. If you follow the steps from beginning to end, you shouldn't have any problems. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up on YouTube. Don't forget you can find me on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. If you got any comments or suggestions about anything we did on this Jeep Wrangler today, or anything Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, or Ram related, you can always email me at david at motorcitymechanic.com and I'll try to get back to you in a timely manner. If this is the first time you've ever watched one of my videos, make sure to hit the subscribe button. If you're a returning subscriber,
hit the bell icon next to the subscribe button that way you get notified instantly when videos such as this get uploaded. If you want to help support the channel and you use Amazon, please use the link in the description below the video. Anything you purchase on Amazon using that link, I will get credit for and that's one way you can help support this channel. Once again everybody, thanks for watching.